Hello there. Hey, what's going on, guys? Tired Marine here. Looping the killer in DVD may seem like a lost cause sometimes for you, but worry no more. To help you ace the art of loops, I've identified 11 crucial truths that will redefine your approach to the game, optimizing your performance dramatically. This involves a combination of smart navigation, on-the-spot decision-making, and handling intense scenarios with a killer chasing you. So brace yourselves as I'm about to share these game-changing insights and strategies that will certainly elevate your looping skills and boost your survival rate like never before so without further ado let's hop right in so tip number one you guys need to slow down be patient Paying attention to the killer's actions can prevent you from falling into their mind games. If you put enough distance between you and the killer, slow down, stop running and walk instead, maybe even crouch like this. This will give you time to observe and strategize on your next moves. Remember, you as the survivor get to dictate which direction this loop is going to go, how the chase is going to proceed, rather than letting the killer decide. This can be especially useful on loops such as the shack, when the killer will double back on the outside to try to cut you off at the window or even in midwitch in the courtyard like this loop here you can easily easily be able to tell where the killer's red stain is or even hear them walking around the corner if they're trying to mind game you by moonwalking slowing down is the way to success i assure you tip number two don't stick to weak tiles. If a tile or structure you're looping around isn't as strong as you'd like or the killer can easily mind game you, don't stick around. Instead, move away and look for a stronger loop elsewhere. You've already used that loop up. In this example, I had looped that window three times so the entity blocked it. I had to move to a stronger loop at this rock. And then, in this example, I cornered myself into this room and had to wait for the Billy to break the door. And as he was doing that and stunned from that, I was able to move to the stronger loop that you saw earlier in this video in the courtyard. Don't stick on the weak loops use it and then lose it tip number three fake window vaults and pallet drops as a new player don't be afraid to try faking vaults or pallet drops despite what you might think many killers still fall for these tricks even after hundreds of hours of gameplay so experiment with this strategy and adapt based on the killer's reaction just know that it is a risk that you have to take but you'll honestly be surprised at how often it actually does work if you've enjoyed the video so far, go ahead and let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Turn on notifications for more amazing content in the future. Also, while we're here, drop a comment down below and tell me who your favorite killer to play against is. So, speaking of taking risky plays, tip number four is to jump scare the killer. It can be surprisingly effective to surprise the killer by suddenly turning a corner and confronting them. This unexpected move can confuse or distract them, buying you any extra time to escape. And it's actually quite funny when it does work. Okay, so tip number five hug loop structures always try to stay as close as possible to the structures you're looping around the closer you are to the structure the more loops you can achieve before the killer catches up to you this is because whenever you're looping closer you're covering less distance and oftentimes killers will actually loop a little bit wider and they're losing distance as you are gaining distance this helps you to buy as much time as possible while your teammates hopefully are actually working Working on generators and you're distracting the killer. Tip number six, only loop near dead zones as a last resort. Remember guys that looping involves creating a path to waste the killer's time while avoiding these dead zones. So I highly recommend opting for a pallet in the center of the map near other stronger loops rather than a stronger pallet at the corner to avoid running into dead zones after the pallet is kicked by the killer. So if possible, have control over the direction of your loops. For instance, if you were to loop a specific pallet in one direction, once it gets destroyed by the killer after you use it, you'll find yourself without an escape route. However, if you were to loop in the opposite direction, you can effectively link your current loop to another powerful loop, making your chase last that much longer. Tip number seven, maximize your use of windows. This has everything to do with vaulting windows or faking window vaults and anything of that nature. So it takes a little bit of time to experiment with, but there's three types of vaults that I wanna show you guys. One is a slow vault when you're walking up to a window. One's a medium vault when you're running at the window but you don't start from far enough away. And then one is the fast vault, which ideally you wanna do more often than not when you're in the middle of a chase so you don't get caught by the killer middle of your animation or right on the other side of the window if they do decide to hit you while you're vaulting the window. Tip number eight, learn what the pros in Dead by Daylight call 
check spots. Check spots are places and loops where you can stop and observe the killer's actions to plan your next move. Listen, the developers gave the survivors a third person point of view camera. I need you guys to abuse it. Whenever you're able to do that, you can see the killer before they even see you. And I promise you guys doing this will pave the way to many great escapes. Tip number nine, utilize chase perks. They're there, so why not use them? Chase perks such as windows of opportunity, resilience, made for this, and yes, even dead hard can significantly improve your chances for survival. Resilience is gonna increase your vault speed, making it that much more difficult for the killer to hit you when you're vaulting. Windows of opportunity can show you where all the pallets that your teammates may have dropped in solo queue, or all the windows around you, all the vault locations that you can connect one after the other. Maybe for this is going to give you that little bit of extra speed boost that you need just to greed the pallet maybe one more time and dead hard well you know you'll get an extra life state maybe if you time it just right and your ping is low enough <laughs> tip number 10 is to practice and fail and learn to get better it's the importance of playtime everybody actual gameplay is the best practice the more you play the more familiar you're going to become with the game mechanics controls situational responses the more time you have in the game the better game sense you're going to have you will fail you will have to take risks you will learn and you will grow i promise you guys i assure you there is a light at the end of the tunnel and that brings us to our last tip tip number 11 remember to have fun in Dead by Daylight. Embrace those thrilling moments. Take breaks if you need to. Experiment with variety. Play with friends. Don't stress about ranking. Enjoy the game. So in conclusion, the real key to mastering loops lies in understanding these crucial truths, committing to regular practice and learning from every game. Don't be disheartened by any initial struggles. Rather, see them as opportunities to refine your skills and grow as a player. So keep these points in mind, practice diligently, and watch as your looping game transforms. Thank you guys for joining me in this tutorial. I look forward to hearing about your many victorious games in the comments below. Tired Marine, 